For this little video, we're going to talk about two special cases in two-dimensional equilibrium. One is for problems involving a two-force member, which is a member that has forces that are only applied at two positions on it. And the other case is for a three-force member, which is a solid chunk of material where there are three different spots that forces are applied. Two force members. So looking at this frame, can you see which piece of it is a two force member? It's going to be this guy right here. So there's a nail over here and a nail over here. And we want to draw a free body diagram of this chunk that is the two force member and see a couple different tricks about it. If you are going to ask the question, what direction are the forces acting on points A and B? Okay, so we're going to draw a free body diagram, and this nail is pushing and pulling on this board. So what direction are the forces acting at these two points? And there's actually a very specific answer for this, and the answer is there because it is a two-force member. Let's go ahead and orient our coordinate system in the normal and tangential direction. So we're going to put everything that is lined up with the board in the x direction and perpendicular to that in the y direction. And let's just throw up a random force on here, okay? So let's say there's a force on A and part of it is in the tangential direction, part of it's in the normal direction. If that's the force on A and we want to apply static equilibrium. So we want to have everything in the x direction add to zero, everything in the y direction, and we don't want it spinning either. So we want all the moments to add to zero. If this is the case, and that force is applied at A, how could we balance it over here at B? So what would you apply at B to try and create something that's not moving at all? Is it even possible to put something at B that would stop all motion. Okay, so let's look at FX. So we can have something at B that has equal and opposite X forces. So it was going to the right, is now coming down. It can have equal and opposite Y forces. What was going up is now coming down. So we can balance FX and FY, but what about the moment? Okay, so for the moment, we have to choose a point to take the moment around. So let's just choose one of the ends. Let's, let's take the moment around end B. So if we take the moment around B and we say we don't want this thing spinning around, right? So we're going to go from B to A. That's our position vector is this green arrow right here. So if we go from, from B to A, we have something and see how we have our coordinate system aligned so that this position vector is entirely in the x direction. And then we have part of the force in the x direction, part in the y. Well, this piece in the y direction, that's going to cause it to rotate. And if there's only one force out here, we're not going to be able to stop rotational motion for this orientation of the force. Do you see how this y component is going to make it rotate? And if there's only one force out here, there is no third force, so this is a two-force member. If there's no third force that's fighting this rotation, there's, there's going to be no way to balance this moment for the force in that direction. Okay, so if we wanted to apply forces on this that we could actually create equilibrium with, what direction would those forces be in? You see that? So yeah, if it's around B, you're not worried about the forces at B, and anything in the Y direction at A is going to rotate it. How about if the force at A is only aligned with this beam? So if we take the moment around B, because it's lined up with it, that's not going to rotate it. Remember, to rotate something, you have to have a chunk of the force that's perpendicular to the bar, bar. So in order to maintain static equilibrium, if you only have forces at two spots, the direction of the force has to be lined up with your beam. Because if it's not, it'll start rotating and it won't be static anymore. For two force members, 
this is the direction of the force. The force is going to be in the same direction as the beam. Okay, so that is the answer. This is going to be in pure tension or pure compression. So it's either going to be stretched out like taffy or it's going to be smooshed together until it buckles. But for two force members, you can immediately tell what direction the force at these little pin supports is. Okay, one more comment for two force members. The example I just gave you was for pin supports, a hinge or a pin. And if you remember how you draw the forces for a pin support, these guys, you can rotate around them. They do not stop rotational motion. And this is the case where you would have a force that would be lined up with your beam. If you have something like this, now this is a two force member too, but it's not a pin support at the end, it is a fixed support. If you have a fixed support at the end, then the forces do not have to line up. So for this case, this little beam right here, he's not gonna be in pure tension or pure compression. He's actually bending and it's because of the support. So this support can fight back against the motion. If you drew a free body diagram of this, what would it look like? So you would have the weight hanging off the end of it. So here's the wall would have to hold up, but then the wall is doing more than just holding it up. The wall is also stopping it from rotating. So the wall is also adding this moment to it, a torque to it. So the reaction over here at the fixed support, it's not just X and Y forces. It's actually stopping it from, from rotating. So you would add this little moment at the end too. And so in this case, you don't have forces that are in the same direction of the beam, and it's not straight compression or tension anymore. You have the whole beam would start bending before it, it breaks. So that two force member only works if you have a pin support and not for other supports that could withstand bending moments. Three force members. Can you identify some three force members on this thing? Let's look at this beam right here. So we've got pin at A, at B, at C. That means we have forces applied at three points along this thing. Let's go ahead and make a free body diagram of this horizontal beam over here. So what do we have? We have a force pulling straight down at C. It's holding up a sign or something over there. And then at B, we know that this is a two force member. So because this is a two force member, we know the force over here is in the same direction. Now, if we're looking at the forces on this two force member, this is the direction. It's in compression, right? It's going to buckle if you load it too much. But if you look at how those flop around, we have little pairs of equal and opposite forces, okay? So if we look at what force is actually acting on the three force member, it's pushing up on it, okay? So it's propping it up. This little piece of wood here is pushing up on the three force member, while the three force member is pushing down on this guy, causing it into compression. Okay, so we have the weight hanging down. B, we know the direction here. And the question of the day is, what direction is the force at point A? Can we say anything about the direction of the force at point A? And in fact, we can figure out what direction this guy has to be in. It comes from our equilibrium equations again. Okay, so we know all the forces are going to have to add to zero, x and y, and this is going to come down to a moment equation again. And to figure out the direction of the force at A, what we're going to do is we're going to take the moment around point D. To define point D, we're going to draw the line of action of the forces that were acting over here at these two points. So we knew this direction. We knew this direction. Those two lines of actions intersect up here somewhere. And we're going to go ahead and take the moment around this point. That's a great spot to take the moment around. 
because the forces here at the end, these two guys are not going to contribute to that moment because the line of action goes through that point. Do you see that? So this will not rotate it around this point. B will not rotate it around this point. So what direction does A have to be in? Okay, if we draw A in just some random direction here, we know B doesn't go into the moment, C doesn't go into the moment. So if it's at just some random direction and there's nothing to balance it, that would, that would be rotating it around this point D, right? So the only way that it would not rotate is if that A force had its line of action going through the same point too. Do you see how that works out? So the only way for the moment to add to zero on a three force member is if the line of action of each of those forces come through the same point. And you can use that little trick to figure out the angle, the direction that each of those forces are in. Okay, so let's just put some numbers on this thing. Let's say we know 0.2 meters, 0.3 meters. We know a direction down here, 30 degrees. If we create a triangle over here, the base is 0.3, the angle, this is the same angle up here, is down here, 30 degrees, so tangent is opposite over adjacent. You can find how tall this triangle is. So that's defining where this point is that all the line of actions are concurrent with. So we have the height of this smaller triangle because we know this angle. The next step Let's go ahead and draw one more triangle, this green triangle. We know the height, we know the base, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3, 0 0.5 across. And again, using tangent as opposite over adjacent, we now know the angle of the line of action of the force coming in at A. And if this is a three force member, you can add these vectors head to tail, head to tail, or you can break everything into X and Y components, but either way you do it, once you have the directions of everything, that's one fewer piece of information that you have to solve for. So you have fewer unknowns when you use this trick of three force members.